So moving on to paint the MG. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give this coat uh, a base coat. And for this I am going to be using Vallejo Glossy Black. Mixed with a touch of leather belt from the Panzer Aces range. Alright, so I've already got the wet palette up and running. Again, more of the glossy black and a, and a, a touch of the brown just to, you know, just to take the, the complete sort of black shade off, I suppose you want to call it. So, all right, so all we're going to do is Give it a few thin coats. I mean, you can airbrush this if you prefer. I just thought, well, I'm instead of setting the airbrush up, I use it. You know, just brush paint it. Just get a couple of good even coats on. But yeah, it'd be a lot quicker if you did airbrush it. It's in all the nooks and crannies. So. Show this side on the cam and then we'll come back when it's all been base coat but as you, as you can see you get the gist of what we need to do I'm going to paint everything I know these handles are a different colour I'm going to base them up as well I'm not going to do the stock I'm just going to leave that for now again do your references as I found out watching somebody else I didn't realise that they were, uh, they were kind of two different. One was wood and the other one was sort of the Bakelite plastic. So again, I presume you have to do your research on what uh, time scale your MG is from or, you know, not being an expert in that field, I'm not 100% sure, but... Alright, so looking a bit rough at the moment, but as you can see, I've got the first sort of base coat layer on for the black. I'm just going to let that dry for a, f a few minutes and then give it another one. So, what we'll do, we'll come back when this is fully based up and then we'll move on to the next stage. So we've got it all base coated up, or even base coated up. Next I'm just going to um, paint the stock or just give that a base coat as well, which I'm just going to use this for it. Okay, so it should get a different texture, a different hue, um, and obviously as you can see that's quite a satin coat on there. So uh, this one should, in theory, dry matte. So. Just um, again, I'm gonna add just a t little touch of brown, and then right. and we'll base it up. So. Thin coats again. probably take a couple of coats so it's all a process so no no need to rush okay so you can see that's a different sort of shade of a, more of a dark brown I suppose but there you go so what I'll do is I'll let that dry 
I'm gonna keep touching that really because I'm gonna way through but um let that dry give that another coat and then we'll, then we'll come back again base up this part near the trigger the handle of the trigger and then we can start with the sort of war warning effects weathering so the gun's all base coated up as you can see and dry I've also masked up the stock at the back because we don't want to get any of the uh, chipping on that so next up we're going to do a bit of sponge chipping I've just decanted a bit on a uh, mixing cup here so what I'm going to be using for that is the AK Gen 3 gun metal okay as one which is the darker one and the natural steel for the lighter one all right so a bit of packing sponge this this firmer stuff's actually very good for chipping with I've got a couple of scrap bits here as well if needs be um, some people use tweezers then clamping tweezers I'm just gonna do it by hand at the minute so what we'll do is take a little bit of the gun metal unload onto a napkin a paper towel and then dab it where we need it okay don't need to mad with this so I think we where this would logically chip okay well, good thing about the sponge technique is you always kind of get random chips so okay as you can see just from that little bit it uh, does add a lot a lot of texture to the weapon again you don't want to go too overboard with this it's, it's very easy to get carried away with chipping so usual thing less is more okay so a bit more the end of the barrel if you do go overboard it's not too hard just to repay over it but you want it to give it that metal look all right so I'm definitely not going to go much further than that so Okay, that's as far as I'm gonna go. I really don't want to go overboard with this. Like I say, it's very, very easy to get carried away with chipping, especially the sponge chipping, it's it's quite therapeutic. So again we're gonna leave that to dry. Um and then and then obviously have overall looks if there's anything that's a bit out of scale um or, or chipping wise that we're not happy with, we can always again, like I say, touch in, get rid of that. So so the next step now is to paint the smock, the camo smock. So again, what we're going to do is use the AK Gen 3 oak leaf palm tree and plane tree pattern set. As you can see, we've got a nice little diagram on the back for each of the uh, camo patterns. So I'm going to be doing this one here, or attempting to. So confession time now, I've never painted this before. So this is going to be first time and first time on camera as well. So we'll see how this pans out um, I've already got my palette loaded up so basically what we're going to do is as you can see I'll give it just a generic base coat of brown just to cover the uh, the light primer but we're going to go over this with the base coat of the reddish grey which is that colour there probably going to mix it in as well I've got, I think I've got the shadow brown colour brown black on there it might just darken it off a touch and then obviously highlight it you're going to paint it like would a normal sort of plain uniform 
So highlights and shadows where required, and then we'll put the camo splot, uh, blotches on after. So we'll just move the palette of the paint out of the way. So normal procedure with a wet palette, thin layers, build it up. Okay. So we're just going to cover everything with this. Good couple of layers just to get a nice even base coat. remember to let each layer dry thoroughly before going over it again being acrylics it shouldn't take too long but again you don't want to be dragging it pulling it around Alright, so what we'll do is let this dry, give it another coat, and then we'll come back, start with the uh, highlights and shadows. Base coat's dry now, so what we're going to do is move on to doing the highlights. So all I've done is took the original base coat colour, which I mixed with a, a touch of this black-brown colour, uh, and then I'm just going to gradually add this into this mix to lighten it up. So we'll get back to some sort of shade and then if I want to it a bit lighter I'll either add a bit of um, flat fresh or to be honest I might even just use this red brown colour. So again, you, can, you know if you put it like I can see where the highlights are going to be. So all on top of the folds, these sleeves here, or cuffs should I say. And then we'll just sketch them in.
Okay, so there we have the first set of highlights. As you can see, we'll probably go a little bit brighter than that because that will just die back. And then we'll move on to the camo splodges. I think as well we'll just um, paint in some of the deeper shadows, a bit of outlining, especially around this area here, around where the, these cuffs are. We'll just dark line around there to that then add separation to to each part. We're now with the base coat down on the smock. As you can see, we've got the highlights and shadows in there. So it's time now to start painting the blotches. So we'll use the uh, reference on the back of the box. All right. So as you can see, really just a basically some joined up dots for want of a better word it's a bit more sophisticated than that but as you can see um, so what I'm going to use for the dark I'm going to do the dark first so I'm going to use the grim brown about uh, this set which is the AK um, triple yeah that look <laughs> four ones and a two there you go all right so I've wet, laid some of that down on the palette next to me Thin that with a bit of water. I have actually got a picture up as well on my screen in front as a, just another bit of a reference guide of where to put the blotches. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll um, just adjust this a little bit, I think. So just to show we are going to be using this colour here. All right, it's already thinned. Probably just add a little bit more water. But again, you don't want it thick. Nice thin paint, always unload on your paper towel next to you. So I'm going to start with one of the cuffs. All right, and uh, basically we're just going to just add blotches really. Again, if you have got reference, I suggest you use it. Always good, but again, Being on such a area to actually do this. You know, it's probably probably not the best example, but I'll do a quick bit and then you then you'll get the idea. Again, if you want to move on to an actually a full figure or a torso or you know doing it in 35th, then obviously adapt this to the scale that you're working in. Uh, so all right. So you get the gist of what you do with the brown, okay? So again, if you've got reference, use your reference. Um, and then, obviously we'll come back and then we'll do the orangey, rusty brown colour after. So I'll just go off cam, I'll finish blotting in the the dark brown splot the blobs, splotches, whatever you want to call them. And then, uh, and then I'll come back. Brown splotches are now done, so we're going to move on to the light orangey brown colour. So this again, we're going to be using the AK light brown out of the set. So treble one zero zero. Okay, I've already got that on the palette. So, so using the reference again. All right, as you can see, we'll use it fill in some of the brown splots in the middle and then there is obviously some on their own as well which covers the lighter brown colour of the base right, so so again tap in motion and just kind of filling in it's 
some of the brown spots. I think this is really a very simplified way of doing this. I think it's a bit more technical um, than what I am doing, but obviously it gives you the Just of how this camo works, I think. So there you go, get the impression of what I'm going to be doing. Again, I'm going to uh, I'll carry on, finish doing this, and then uh, then we'll come back and see the finished product. So there we go. It's a quick sort of demo, and like I said, first time I've ever done it. So a bit of a learning curve for me as well. Probably going to have to go back and refine it in a few little places. You can see it's a bit a bit stark on this sleeve here. But again, I don't think the other sleeve come out too bad, if I'm honest. So it does give you the impression of the uh, the oak leaf. Autumn smock underneath is uh, his wet weather gear. Let's just pull it out to a bit more of a... a normal viewing level. So, there we go. Hope that uh, helps somebody. So what I'm going to do now, is like I say, I'm going to leave that to dry. If I feel there's any bits of probably a bit of outlining, bit of shadowing to do, um, stuff like that. Again, if you if you are doing that, your palette's there anyway. Just lighten it up, darken it as you see fit with whatever you know with whatever you've got this set has pretty much got everything in it you need to be honest I'd say and I, I, I presume the Vallejo one has as well they do a set and probably a few other manufacturers as well so they're all going to roughly do the same sort of job and you could put you know you can use this to lighten and dark and this is obviously the shadow colour the black brown um, the only thing to lighten probably this if you did want to do that was probably a bit of sunny skin tone flesh tone something like that would be a high ideal color for that so next job is for me now to finish this figure off at long last is um is to attach the parts as in the mg needs attaching is canister which i've painted off cam again it's only field gray with a bit I would think, and then I've got to just knock up and paint his uh, water canister, which again is pretty pretty straightforward. Really, There's a lot of reference on that, so I'm going to knock that up, and then we'll come back, final reveal, and then as a final thing, they do come these little these dragon figures with a little injection molded plastic base, which I think is quite nice. So I'm going to mask this off, and then I am probably going to use something like. So yeah, we'll use some of this AK terrains paste and we'll make a bit of a base for him out of that. Um, and that should finish it off. So we're going to move on and paint the stock. All right, I have decided to paint a wooden stock. So what this is based up with is just on the palette is just what I've got on here. This is still the camouflage colours um, that I was using for painting his camo smock underneath his wet weather gear. Okay, so there's just various browns and oranges and you know basic wood, wood colours, shall we say? So just zoom back in. Pull it out of the way. So what we're going to do is just pick up 
the dark brown colour, which is this one. I'm going to have a mixture of these two to begin with. And then there'll be probably a mixture of this one and this orangey brown colour here. We've also got this sort of fleshy colour, which is actually Panzer Aces um, Light Rust, I think it's called. I'll just check. Oh, no, sorry. There you go. Yellowish, yellowish, yellowish rust, if you can say it. Get it back in camera shot, so like that. Which also is quite a nice flesh colour. And then we're going to mix these up, get different tones and, you know, variations on the wood grain. So, visor on. Okay, so we're going to pick this dark colour. Make a good, so you've got a pretty good point on your brush. You know, but what you're going to do is shift the palette out of the way. Is you're not really going to see this because of the dark brown, but it will show up later on. Again, if you're doing wooden propellers on World War One aircraft, again, this works for that. So what you're going to do is paint like lines, like wood grain lines, okay, again, MG42s and um, obviously wooden stock guns, plenty of reference online, so go and Google, have a look what they look like, and just take reference from that with colours, another way of doing this is obviously oils, um, base it up with a light sand colour, and draw on the, these just so many ways of painting wood to be honest it's just i base this one up i'm going kind of dark to light instead of light to dark or you know whatever um again it's always personal choice of how you want to go it's just i tend to try and use what paint i've got on the palette because I'm lazy to be honest to keep getting paints out and putting it on I've got the wet palette going and you know there's enough browns on this to make every shade going so I'm just going to run with that really just for convenience rather than anything else so enough waffle let's get back on to the paint here actually as well is quite thick Thicker than I would normally have it, I normally have it quite thin. Right, so you can see the line starting to appear. I hope. Yeah. So again, if we take sort of the yellowy rust colour, just knock that in, just to lighten the sort of mid brown colour. You can put knots in it and all sorts of effects. You know, edge highlighting. Okay. So how far you take this again is personal choice. 
So it's going to go a bit more. Just add a bit of the uh, orangey tone I used on this camo smock on this just to make it a bit warmer. Okay. So you can see you've got the makings here of a nice wood green effect and one effect that is good for this is if you've got it is um is inks which will add like a glossy varnish coat or again you can semi matte varnish brush that on anything just to you know it just then uh, gives it that sort of varnish look i suppose I've got the makings of a uh, wooden stock so what we're going to do is take the sort of original mid brown thin it down to let me just pull it up so you can see so this consistency here okay this one here really 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 thin so it's just like tinted water Unload. On the paper towel. And then. Just brush that. All the way over. What that will do is then just blend everything together. without covering up your previous work colour next again thin that down to just tinted water just gonna lay the brushes you can see I want that dripping and then so there we go just a quick basic wooden stock so I'm gonna leave that to dry uh, and then come back, last finishing bit for the MG is going to be a bit of graphite. Just rub a bit of graphite just to make it. I'm going to probably, looking at it, might tone down a few of these chips. We'll see what it's like with the graphite on it, but, you know. Oh, and I've got that that to paint there. Um, the bit on the handle, which is like a plastic colour. I'm going to just use a ready brown colour. Again, I might use something off my palette just to, just to give that impression, so...
just a quick job to be honest it is going to when it's on the figure sort of hang upside down under here somewhere somehow I've got to work out how to attach that that'll be fun but yeah So thank you for watching this episode and we'll come back to the final assembly and final bits and bobs just to finish this figure off. So see you next time.